Howdy folks, Owen from EMF here. Just wanted to talk to you today about recovery and a couple of factors that I hope you would, most people should have in their training regime or if they don't, maybe consider including. I had spoken about this on a previous video, so I just wanted to go into it a bit more detail and just explain the, the pyramid of recovery and how it will actually factor into you looking like this great looking chap here with his bulgy biceps. Um, there's five different steps here in the pyramid and again this isn't a complete list or I'm sure there are extra ones but in terms of magnitude of effect i.e. which ones matter the most and which ones don't matter as much what we have in the bottom you can see is physical and mental health again if you're injured or if you're carrying knocks or needles or strains or pulls and you're trying to push through a program it's just not going to work if your back is at you and you're trying to get stronger or you're trying to put on weight and fat it's probably the wrong way to worry about it you should have rehab as your sport you should if, if it's at you more than a week or two maybe go to a physio go to a doctor get it assessed and just figure out what is the issue what do you need to do before you can really go headlong into a program or into a regime of fat loss or muscle gain and again mental health is a huge one how your outlook and life affects everything, everything that's really like if you're not mentally there, there's no nutrition protocol, there's no exercise regime that will trump that. Those two things are integral just to the, the whole picture and the, your adherence to any sort of a protocol, be it fitness or be it anything else, okay? Next one we have up is sleep. Again, a huge factor in recovery in terms of adapting to the, the stimulus, that's what the training is. It's like turning on the key of a car, you've started something, but cars have started moving, yet there's a lot of factors that need to work together in order to get the car to where it wants to go, get it from A to B, and sleep, you're talking. Again, different recommendations, maybe seven to nine hours, and it can seem to be broken up if you power nap during the evening, if you can accumulate those nine hours, but definitely it seems the more the better and that will have a massive effect on the getting to here but it will also affect the needs of the physical and mental well-being people who are usually overstressed always seem to be under sleeping as well sleep deprived and it's just not a place that gains will come it's not an environment that is gains inducing or losses if it's a fat loss program nutrition of course is huge in terms of fueling the training and recovering from that training Again, your protein for the amino acids to build those protein blocks are, are those muscles even and the nutrition for creating a deficit if you want to actually lose weight. Two things that you just need to have in place and if you're doing the best training in the world and you're going hard and going hard but you're not sufficiently recovering from it, you're not eating enough, you're not going to gain any weight, you're not going to gain any muscle. Again, if you're a ranked beginner, some of these things can be gotten around but usually for the, the rest of us that you have to have a good nutrition plan in place and it has to be goal oriented again you wouldn't follow any clean eating protocol think creative eating eat what you want but make it specific if you're looking to lose weight you're going to have to eat a lot of protein but you need to go and attract your food as well in order to get that deficit where you can lose the weight planning again another underutilized factor would be having a training plan what's the goal and have a deadline if I'm saying right I'm going to lose 5 kilos in 12 weeks how many um, pounds or how many grams is that per week work it out and then try and say right I'll do this amount of training I'll take this week off and I'll recover those weeks again that's periodization that's planning and it's always quite useful to have someone else do that for you just to have an objective view because you yourself will always be biased you probably work on your strengths a bit more you probably neglect your weaknesses and you might never take a week off because I keep pushing you need a good coach to come in and say, look, you're a bit weaker today, you're a bit tired. We'll take an easy session because we'll come back even hungrier and we'll work on it, okay? And last one, but probably the most used one, is the protocols. Again, these are your sort of your foam rolling, going for a massage and doing different types of stretching, yoga. Great for recovery, absolutely, but they're at the top of the, of the pyramid for a reason. All these, if they're not in place, you can do all the yoga, all the foam rolling you want you're not going to recover sufficiently from that training and you're not going to reach the top like our nice well muscle friend is there. So 
Again, look at each one. Is it a part of my training or my regime? Does it fit in? And if not, go after that. Try not to look for the silver bullet in terms of the protocol, the best recovery supplement or the best recovery stretch. They're not going to have that much of a factor compared to all the rest, okay? One for me, MF. Over and out. Thank you.